This year's Grande Partenza was dubbed the Big Star. Belfast turned out in force as the Emerald Isle embraced pink. And with the likes of Philip Dignan, Nicholas Roach and Daniel Martin, there was plenty of local interest. I kind of can't believe we're in Ireland about to start a Grand Tour, to be honest. It's, uh, it's a bit surreal and I always put myself under a lot of personal pressure, but it's... I'm not feeling it at all. I'm just going to go out there and do my thing and, yeah, I'm looking forward to three weeks racing. As it turned out, Martin's Giro lasted little over 17 minutes. Oh, 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 my goodness. Four down and that oh, was Dan Martin. It's Dan Martin. Irish hopes and Garmin Shop's plans were left in tatters as their big hope for the Maglia Rosa exited with a broken collarbone. Instead, it was Orica Green Edge Svein Tuff to top the podium on the opening day in what turned out to be a superb opening week for the Australian team. Marcel Kittel was undoubtedly the big-name sprinter in the pack, and he lived up to his billing in Belfast, while Michael Matthews made sure that the Maglia Rosa stayed with Orica Green Edge. Kittel underlined his dominance the next day with a breathtaking show of raw power in Dublin. Nowhere to be seen, drank for the line, absolutely superb, and here comes Kittel! Oh, he takes it on the line! It was close, actually, I thought I lost the race already because I was uh, really in a not, good, not in a good position. But uh, yeah, I, after I saw the finish line, I thought, OK, um, you don't give up now, you just try everything you have. An extra rest day was granted this year as the peloton said arrivederci to Ireland and flew back to Italy. But the bad weather followed the Giro, and so too did the crashes. And with a fever putting an end to Kittel's participation, Nasser Boani assumed the mantle of top dog in the sprints. In a space of a week, he won again in Foligno and Salso Maggiore. Not since Laurent Jarbel 15 years ago had a Frenchman been so prolific in the Giro d'Italia. I came to take home at least one stage win. After that, well, I had the three victories. The first week I was aiming for the red jersey, so I was concentrating on the sprints, and I did everything to keep it until then. I'm hoping to keep it until tomorrow to the finish line. Matthews displayed the talent that helped him become the under-23 world champion in 2010, even holding on uphill for a stage win against Cadell Evans in Monte Cassino as he clung tenaciously to the Maglia Rosa for six days. It proved to be a day of controversy as well. Evans' decision to press on in the finale, despite a crash that affected a number of the GC favourites caught up in the melee, wasn't universally praised. Katusha were the worst affected, losing Joaquim Rodriguez, Angel Vicioso and Gianpaolo Caruso. Well, we uh, look like we lost the feet, you know, uh, losing Porito in this race, losing another two guys, uh, caught up with a broken, broken uh, <clears throat> femur, wrists, ribs. Uh, it's, it's a big loss, it's a big loss and uh, so no, nothing we can do, no, nothing we can change, so this is the history. This is the day to forget. The first half of the Giro wasn't without Italian triumph. Diego Lisi underlined his credentials as a man for the future, winning stages in Vigiano and Monte Copiolo in short order. Lisi hits the peak and he goes for it. It's about timing and what a piece of genius that was. Oh, chapeau, sir. Not a pencil. For my team, but I think for all the Italian riders too, it's really amazing to win at the Giro d'Italia. I grew up watching it, and it was my dream to win it. So to win two stages, it's like a dream come true. And arguably the most combative team were Bardiani CSF, always making their presence felt in breakaways. Marco Canola and Enrico Battaglin with back-to-back -back wins as the race headed to the Alps. Though for Italian fans, the revelation of the Giro was Fabio Aru. On the Monte Campione stage dedicated to the memory of Marco Pantani, the 23-year-old from Astana delivered a Pantani-esque victory, which provided the springboard to an eventual place on the final podium in Trieste. Look at this, takes the final curves, 50 metres to go. He has taken a beautiful stage. 
A superb opening week from Orica Green Edge and four days in the Maglia Rosa for Cadell Evans lifted the spirits of the travelling Australian fans. But the most remarkable Aussie story was written by Michael Rogers on stage 11. Cleared of any wrongdoing over a positive test for Clem Buterol, just a couple of weeks before the Giro, Rogers scored his first Grand Tour victory in incredible style. First and foremost, my family, they were, you know, within my mind, they were the closest people, you know, to me and, and, uh, and, and if, without them, passing those months would have been a, a lot more difficult. You know, there was a lot of anger behind that and, um, and it was certainly a, a big pressure release, big, uh, big weight off my shoulders. So. Taking a long time to win a, a stage of a Grand Tour and I hope it doesn't take another 12 to win my second. <laughs> <laughs> but the big story of this Giro d'Italia was one written by the Colombians. Stay tuned to see how the Maglia Rosa was won in part two. Among the pre-race favourites at the Giro presentation in Belfast, the two young Colombians, Nairo Quintana, last year's Tour de France runner-up, and Rigoberto Uran, last year's Giro runner-up, were being touted as the strongest. By the mid-Giro point, it was Uran who stepped up to the mark first with a performance of his career against the clock in the Barolo time trial. The 27-year-old put a minute and 17 seconds into second place Diego Lisi, and a further 17 seconds into Cadell Evans, displacing the Australian from top spot in the general classification. The saddle and they're screaming at him on his radio I'm sure exactly what he has done and what he can do he has to just keep on turning the pedals 100 meters still to go and uh, I think Lucy has already doffed his cap over the line he will come it's incredible I'm surprised to win especially in a time trial I'm speechless I've worked a lot on this, and I think the result for me is huge, and a big day for me and my team. Quintana, complaining of breathing problems caused by a cold, lost time over the hilly 42-kilometre course, putting him almost three and a half minutes behind his compatriot. Was this a bluff from the poker face, Quintana? I think maybe he was hoping for slightly better today. But the one man who definitely wasn't afraid to show his hand was Julian Arredondo, another of Colombia's vastly talented young generation. The 25-year-old in his first season with Trek Factory Racing set about laying claim to the Martins jersey from stage eight onwards. Wow, Arredondo goes on the attack. Once in blue, he would not be dislodged. Further reward coming his way on stage 18 to Rifugio Panarotta. He points to the sky, he says the mountains is what it's about, the colour blue is where I am, and the colour blue is what I have got. Incredible, incredible, ancora incredulo. Incredible, incredible. I want to dedicate this victory to all my team. We are a family and we kept trying and trying. I got myself into the break and I was able to finish it off to my family and all the Colombians. Now to enjoy this and see what happens next. If Quintana was playing a tactical bluff earlier, he started to put in play his winning moves on the Alpine stages, clawing back almost a minute of the deficit to Oran on the stage finishes at Europa and Monte Campione. There goes uh, Quintana and its damage limitation from Oran behind. The end game of the 2014 Giro was approaching. The legendary climbs of the Stelvio, Grappa and Zoncolan would deliver a final victor. The first of these days, stage 16, produced one of the most epic and ultimately controversial days in recent Grand Tour history, with conditions that tested the riders to their very limits. Only 139 kilometers long, but with a Paso Gavia, Paso Stelvio, and a mountaintop finish on Val Martello, Quintana chose this as his launch pad. This is easy stuff. He's in his pop. There's the line, and Quintana is about to take the lead of this race with a stage win. It's certainly his day, and it'll probably be his Giro as well. 
But barely had Quintana pulled on the Maglia Rosa than the debate started over an in-race communique interpreted by some teams as a neutralisation of the Stelvio. Final confirmation coming on Twitter from the Giro d'Italia organised themselves. At Giro d'Italia, Stelvio descent neutralised due to snow. Quintana and uh, Roland, they attack, 50 metres to go. I mean, they went away, the like race continuing. And our guys, Rafael, Mike and Nicolas Roche stopped by me and changed the jersey. Because we told them that the downhill is neutralised, there will be red flags, everybody should come together because of the safety and the ice. So for some reason, the, the, some of the riders of some of the team been not informed about that. Because I cannot blame Quintana or Roland too, because they were in the race, they went full gas because they've never been told and I believe them, they said so and we told our riders to stop and slow down. The debate may continue, but there was no doubt Quintana was the strongest rider over the final days of the Giro. A further win on the uphill time trial to Monte Grappa further cemented his claim on the race lead. Fabio Arus had an amazing time. It has just been destroyed by Quintana. The final and hardest test of willpower for those at the top end of the general classification was stage 20, finishing on Monte Zoncolan. From a large breakaway group, Michael Rogers was granted his wish not to have to wait another 12 years for a Grand Tour stage win. He suddenly appreciates what he has achieved. Two stage wins on this Giro d'Italia, and it couldn't happen to a nicer guy. While behind, Quintana and Uran finished neck and neck to seal an historic Giro for Colombia. Uran matching his achievement of 2013, but Quintana becoming his country's first ever winner of the Corsa Rosa. It's hard for me to express. I feel so much joy. It's one of the happiest days of my life. All thanks to my team and my family and all that have helped me to make this dream possible. 